We are John and Ellie, the Barefoot Doctors. We lost our new Leopard 50 catamaran to fire, so we began our search for the perfect performance catamaran for sailing us around the world. Jump on board for this adventure, and together, who knows what we can achieve? Because <laughs> life is better barefoot. Welcome back to another episode of Barefoot Doctors Sailing. On this Atlantic crossing, we are now about halfway to St. Helena, but we have to go several hundred miles off course in order to avoid a 400 mile calm patch on the route to St. Helena. We also share our struggle with creaking pulleys, get advice from Ben of Nahoa on how to catch fish, and I share Paul Badenhurst's techniques for improving your general performance. Okay, so we are now on day seven of the crossing and it's my shift which at this stage is the six o'clock to nine p.m shift we got the sail up about 8 a.m which is great and then we've been averaging 8.1 knots uh, since that time so the winds have been between 10 and 15 knots day seven though um, interesting little fact here seven days to the hour from when we departed cape town we have done 1100 nautical miles which is okay it's pretty good we're quite happy with that considering the amount of calm weather and light winds that we've had i am actually very tired um, even though it's only six o'clock in the evening to nine o'clock in the evening because after my three to six shift i didn't get any sleep because we were working to put the oxley up and then we had lunch and then we chatted and then we were watching the sunset and it's oh my goodness it's such a busy life so i'm actually gonna enjoy my sleep when I get off this shift I'm gonna go straight to bed we should get to Santalina in about five days four or five days because it's 750 miles we'll arrive when we arrive okay guys we are on day eight and we now have the main and the Genoa up we took the Oxley down at about 6 30 this morning because the wind was dying and we were having to go we we're having to motor sail not upwind but at about 60 to 80 degrees upwind so as a result we are now sailing with the motor on because the winds are only about eight knots and we have to get northwards to get out of the way of big calm areas below St Helena so while we are only a short distance below St Helena we're actually going to sail or motor sail to about 60 miles above St Helena to avoid this big a calm patch that runs from us to St Helena about 700 miles so if we took a straight line we'd have no wind at all this way we motor sail for the morning or the day get into the winds and then jibe and sail to St Helena with some favorable winds and maybe put the Oxley up again so that's where we're at at the moment this is all kind of strategic sailing directions again again um, we are in wide open ocean wide open ocean no nothing on the horizons and in the last three days we have seen one ship so we are all alone well that's certainly the way it seems obviously we know there are other boats you know 50 or 100 miles away but it's very peaceful the birds the birds have gone as well the birds were following us for a few days the sooty turns on the uh, lesser albatross and they're not with us anymore a um, bit, bit disappointing that the sun's not out. It's very cloudy today. You can see grey skies all around, which means no power. But um, we we're going to have to run the engine anyway because of calm wind. So it takes the, that takes the pain of that away slightly. But everything's good. Everything's progressing. You have to uh, strategically manage your course to get the best way to your destination. So that's what we're doing. And it does involve a little bit of motoring. Uh, for some hours for some hours today so I apologize for the rudeness of the mainsail it's really not being considered to the conversation okay but it's very calm it's very peaceful we're in the middle of the Atlantic and there's it's easy as I've said before the horrible stuff is very minimal in time relation to the rest of the stuff and you do spend more time handling very light winds than you do handling very strong winds. Good light sails are important like a Code Zero or a Jenica or a, an Oxley. And obviously the Oxleys have the advantage of being able to go fully downwind and even 180 degrees to the wind as in directly downwind where most sails don't function at that 
at that angle. So everything's good, we'll catch you later. Okay, this is a really common problem on boats. Oops, something squeaking. It's not always to find where the squeaking problem is, but you just have to basically track it with where the sound's coming from and see what's moving. I mean, obviously there are lots of things moving as the main sheet moves. It could be the main sheet block's there, it could be here, or it could be right at the end of the other end of the, but it certainly sounds like it's here. So I'm going to give this block a bit of a squeeze of silicon. It's important not to lose the tops of the aerosol cans because then the silicon cans become useless. Um, it's pretty hard to film, spray and not fall over it all at the same time. It's not made a lot of difference yet. Sometimes you have to take the pressure off the thing to get the silicon right into the um, into the middle of the pulley. And so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to spray it above the center of the pulley so that the silicon then run, runs down with the gravity. At first I was spraying it like at the middle but um, clearly it wasn't getting in so I went above it and then tried a bit more. Sometimes it just takes a bit of time for the silicon to spread everywhere with a few more pulls of the rope. It's not as bad. And this is how I'm balancing myself. Okay, it's not perfect, it's dramatically better though. And uh, what, what I'll do when, the, um, when there's no strain on the, on, the, uh, on the main sheet, I will do it again and just run the pulley manually and spray, take the rope, pull the rope loose and spray up there and spin the, spin the pulley. That should help a bit more, but it's much better. It's not that awful groaning that I was doing before. So at least that's tolerable. Filming, so Mark's meal today is Thai green curry. Mm. Nice bit of kick. Phenomenal rice. <laughs> Puffy and dry, not like my soggy stuff yesterday. Uh, oh, the day whenever it was, a few days ago. Great stuff, Mark. So you're gonna, you're gonna- At least mom taught me well. <laughs> <laughs> so do you, make it at, do you make it at home for your wife? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can now. <laughs> Don't release this video. <laughs> So 13 knots of wind and we're doing about eight, seven to eight knots. Uh, one reef in the Genoa, one reef in the main. We're sailing conservatively to um, save the, the gear and also make it easy. Paul reckons we, by putting the uh, reef in the Genoa, it makes a better shape. So even with a smaller Genoa, because you have better shape using the sling out the side, uh, you get better speeds than if the full main is out when we're sailing at about 60 or 70 degrees apparent, which is what we've got. The wind's on the beam, so it pushes the apparent forward to about 70 degrees or so, so the wind's coming slightly in front. We have the Genoa on the normal track, which is there. The Genoa uh, clue, or the end, the back of the sail comes in too tight. It stops the air from flowing through. The important thing with when you're working with a main and a Genoa or a foresail, it needs to create flow through the past the sails to increase the speed. If the, if the sail is too bowed, it stops the flow of sail, causes turbulence and you slow down. And then you just put the force in the wrong direction, which is laterally and tends to heel the boat over. So by having the, the Genoa out, it creates much better flow past the sails and the Genoa pushes the, the, sail, the wind fast past the mainsail, so you get better speeds. So he's been in situations where he has sailed with a, a first reef or even a second reef uh, Genoa sometimes with people who are using a full Genoa and he's going faster than them. He's also tried it on his own when he's sailing himself. So with the same wind speed with, his, with the 
slightly reduced Genoa but pulled out laterally he gets better speeds usually of 0.8 to 1 knot so we're sailing along very nicely flat water this is like beautiful sailing the sun's just gone behind the clouds uh, but we were making good solar as well which is another nice thing but we've actually got quite a lot of charge because we've been motoring for all of yesterday so St Helena is straight ahead about 600 miles we're not sure if the St Helena customs and immigration opens on Saturday morning because the likelihood is we're going to arrive after 5 p.m. on Friday so we're hoping that it will open on Saturday morning but this is absolutely glorious middle of the Atlantic and relatively flat water there's a few little waves bit of swell happening out there you can see a bit of a bit of that but really beautiful sailing and the Sun is out most of the time you can see white fluffy clouds and um, Paul says when the when you're in the trade winds you get lots of small white fluffy clouds so this isn't quite it yet the clouds are still a bit dense um, and this is really the clouds from a system that's just passed us or passed by to the south so everything's looking good we've had to sail a long way north directly northwards um, so we're really doing a, like a dog leg on our track which will add at least 100 miles and maybe 150 or even 200 miles to the distance sailed in the end but we'll see when we get there but if we'd gone the other way we would have been sitting in flat calm waters right now you can't really be in a rush when you're sailing along one of the pulleys is still creaking and groaning there and Elizabeth keeps telling me I need to show everybody the horizon the nothingness because that's what people find interesting no land in sight we have had no land in sight now for nine days it's a bit rocky isn't it sorry about that guys so no land in sight no boats in sight we've we saw one boat about three days ago but apart from that for four days we've had no boats at all which is nice nice and peaceful you don't have to worry too much you don't have to take avoiding action when you're in the middle of the night so the night watches are pretty civilized so we've used um, almost half of our tanks of fuel because of the motoring at the moment the sun has just come out so the solar is putting 720 watts into the batteries and because we're running the engine last night we we're already full so the house batteries are giving us a high voltage alarm which we can ignore water is full we ran the engines uh, the water maker yesterday so we're now 10 days in still trying to fish but we haven't caught anything thanks very much to all of you that have made wonderful suggestions about what we need to do at this point ben from sailing nahoa reached out to us and made a suggestion that he thought would help we had met ben and ashley at cape town had some meals with them and just like us they're looking to build an aluminium catamaran so we had a lot to talk about Neil on our boat also brought Ben and Ashley's Starlink over with him in his underneath luggage from the USA and Mark with his IT expertise contributed to help set it all up. So during our stay in Cape Town we had lots to do with these guys and they are a lovely couple. They are the real deal and they sail by themselves with the two kids and no help. Sailing with only two crew on board is hard enough but to add two extra children that you have to look after during this time makes it even more difficult. I know how hard this is because I did it in a monohull many years ago with with my two young kids crossing from Scotland through the Med and all the way to Turkey but not the big ocean crossings like Ben and Ashley have done so I consider these guys to be the real deal so check out their channel and also Ben catches lots of fish so when he was happy to give us advice we were very keen to listen his suggestion was to hang a fender out the back of the boat and that acted like a teaser creating turbulence that would attract bigger fish from lower down to come and take your lures let's see if that makes any difference what do you reckon Ben from Nahoa? pulling a line on us, seeing if we'll follow his ridiculous instructions or what? Uh, I've seen Ben catch a lot of fish, so <laughs> I'm willing to give this a shot. Yeah, it's worth a try, it's nothing to lose. Hey Ben, I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't doubt you. So fingers crossed, but we didn't catch any fish again today. Okay guys, this is Paul's famous sling, which is, I think, far too underused given the amount of importance it has for creating good sail shape. Paul has been sailing with this all the time. The only time he doesn't use the sling is when you're going upwind above 60 degrees. So here you have an extra line tied onto the clue of the Genoa uh, onto this 
cleats on the side of the boat, which every boat has. So instead of having the clue up there, halfway in, causing that bulging like this, which would trap the wind and reduce the wind flow, this makes the two sails much more parallel. You can pull the, uh, the clue out as far or as little as you like, and you can use it with one reef, two reefs, and, and also obviously with the full Genoa as well. So you can adjust that to get the right sail shape and you increase your speed even when you use less sail. Now the other thing he did was when we're sailing upwind, instead of having the full Genoa out, he furled it in by a couple of rolls on the furler, which allowed the Genoa to be much flatter and that allows you to get about five degrees extra windward heading. The reputation of the cruising cats is that they don't sail up wind, but they can sail up wind quite successfully. And we were getting about 40 degrees apparent when we were sailing and it's probably about 50 degrees. We were probably making about 50 degrees to the true wind on course over ground. And that's what's important. The, the angle you make on course over ground is much more important than the apparent wind. A yacht with racing sails can certainly hit higher than 45 degrees to the true wind but you should be aiming with your boats to get to 45 degrees and then you're tacking and your course over the ground goes through right angles when you work your way upwind and at least that way you are getting upwind as you get more and more degrees away from the 40, uh, 90 degree tacking angle that you can see on your track if you look at your track on your GPS so what you've got to do is try and adjust your sails and this trick of Paul's to roll the the Genoa, the full Genoa in just a couple of turns on the furler which then allows you to tighten up and flatten the, the jib which gives you an extra five degrees upwind that makes a huge difference when you're sailing any distance and have to make upwind yards. Okay guys I'm on the midnight to 3 a.m shift and it's a bit rocky and rolly we're doing a beam reach and the waves are coming in across us so it's and the, the waves are also meant to build up through the night from 1.5 meters to 2.5 meters. And on a beam reach, you're doing a lot of rocking sideways. We just had a big wave and everything sort of started to get flown across the uh, saloon. And just wanna show you what I do here with the, the table. So these tables with leopard, they fold out, which is really good. But if you fold half the table in, you have a nice ledge there you can put your cup in nothing will slide off the table there my hard drive won't fall off there and that way your your coffee won't go spinning across the saloon like it has done in the past so we have had um, on the first couple of days of the trip we had um, two cups of coffee that flew from that bench all the way down the stairs over there in one go in the air and everything on this table was flung across towards the fridge and in fact the big ottoman and the little, little ottoman both slid all the way to the fridge on the far side of the saloon so that's the kind of stuff you get when you're in rough weather and everything has to be really fixed down much more strongly so it's just something to keep in mind and i must say with that uh, effect happening to that mobile ottoman it does create extra space underneath the floor for storage but I actually think I prefer leaving it alone and having a fixed ottoman which uh, doesn't move and I'm quite happy to step over that seat to get in behind the sofa and I can understand why people want to do it that way because it is much easier to get into these two seats on that side if the ottoman moves and there's a gap however when you're in a rough sea and you have all these things sliding around then it does become a bit more of an issue. Obviously, if you had something to fix this ottoman to the floor with right there, uh, when you needed to, then that would be an advantage. I do love this table with that ability to have the ledge so that nothing slipped off the table when you're using it. And everything here stays really well in that area. Everything stays in that little triangle really well. That's Mark Soda Stream and everything stays in that section really well too. So that is really useful for rough weather. Having some sort of containers is good because it keeps things a bit more tidy. You can have more stuff in there. Uh, obviously the printer's really nice and secure there. So that's it. 
you do have to watch all these other areas um, things here there and across there will all slide so that's why we've got the coffee pot and unused mugs and the um, soap in the sink rather than on top of the sink where they normally live obviously Kevin put a rack there which obviously stops the things from moving but because most of the movement is sideways this um, toaster has been working quite well in that position but when it does get rough we take it down as well and put it in that little ledge alongside the plants oh I better go and check the boat wind's picking up the well, speed's picking up 16.1 knots eight knots of boat speed 8.8 9 9.4 okay let's go and look outside see what's happening outside the boat so we are using a single reef Genoa and a single reef main and um, that's the sort of speed we're getting 7.8 9 in 15 knots of true wind. It's on a just off a of beam reach. Apparent wind is at 90 degrees. True wind is about 120 degrees. And that's going along very nicely. It was nice to get a bit of a blast there. I enjoy getting the extra speed. But I want to do it easy. So, But I could feel the power coming on the boat, you know, as it accelerated out. Obviously, if you like what we do and, and the effort we're putting into these videos, subscribe. And obviously, if you want more detailed information, live updates of our position and uh, a daily log, then log on to Patreon and support us through that. All the money, obviously, going to charity is to support suicide prevention worldwide. So, look forward to seeing you on the trip. Catch you later. Thanks for watching guys and if you like what we do, show us the love and hit the like button, then hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss out on your regular fix. Then kick off your shoes and you can come barefoot with us.